Hello and welcome. You're watching uh, NewsX India A List. In our endeavor to bring forth the stories of some of India's finest and brightest, today we have put together yet another unmissable lineup of India's Who's Who. Our first guest for the day is prolific actor Tapsi Pannu. She's recently starring in the film Rashmi Rocket, streaming on Z5. Listen in. Best known for her versatile acting, something which sh should be called out and be questioned uh, scientifically, um, logically. Yeah. So I really wanted to be the vehicle to get this issue to the forefront. She stars in the recent film Rashmi Rocket. So I can bring the conversation yeah. uh, to happen to the forefront, that discussions will start happening. People will actually start thinking about the logical and scientific relevance of this. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that conversation starts. NewsX India A-List proudly recognizes Tapsi Pannu for excellence in acting. Harun Burkham, Amudai Pratap Singh, you're joining us on this special interview as part of our NewsX A-List series. We're in conversation today with a star who needs no introduction. Yes, the extremely talented Tapsi Pannu is with us today. Tapsi, welcome to NewsX. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Uday. Well, uh, always a pleasure, of course, to speak to you, but this time about a very special project. Actually, I think that's uh, that's become uh, synonymous with you, special projects and, of course, special roles. But uh, Rashmi Rocket is, you know, truly a very different story. I don't think we've seen a story on this kind of topic or this kind of woman in a very long time. Or I don't remember when, actually, in the film industry. No, it has. So, I, yeah. As far as my research go goes, it hasn't been done. Yes, uh, so yes. At yes. least in Indian cinema hasn't been done. I don't yes. know about Hollywood. I don't watch many movies. There, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, but uh, as I said, a really special film. Uh, what, but what was your, you know, the one convincing factor that made you do Rashmi Rock? Um, two reasons. First was I love sports. Mm -hmm. I, I love to follow sports. Uh, for me, sports stars are real heroes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in awe of them. So when I got to know about this particular testing mm -hmm. and how it's only done on females, it was shocking. Shocking for me that someone like me who loves sports so much had no clue about something so crazy happening even till date. Yeah. Uh, so that became one reason that if someone like me did not know about it, mm -hmm. who follows sports so closely, so I don't think many people uh, in our country will be aware of such a practice. At least a majority won't. So let me be the vehicle to bring uh, this particular issue to the forefront. And the second uh, reason was, for mo more than a sports film, this was an identity issue film for me. Uh, when someone else decides who you are, mm -hmm. uh, which is a violation of human rights, for, uh, I feel. Nobody else is, is going to tell you you are a man or not a man, or you're a woman, not a woman. So uh, here someone else is taking a call on your behalf and uh, telling you, no, you're not woman enough to run in this uh, race and hence you should be banned. Uh, question on the very identity of a human being, which yes. some, is something which sh should be called out and be questioned uh, scientifically, um, logically. Yeah. So I really wanted to be the vehicle to get this issue to the forefront. Yeah. And do you believe, you know, do you hope that, of course, this will initiate that conversation, but could hopefully lead to change as well? You know, you most recently initiated that conversation with Thapar. Um, You know, you've done it before, of course, with Ping. Do you believe that that conversation hmm. should happen around gender testing, given the fact that it's still happening, as you're saying, in our country? Yes, it, uh, it's happening all over the world. Even the last Tokyo Olympics, there were two Namibian players who were banned because of the same gender testing. Mm -hmm. And I, as, as an actor, I can only use my medium to bring about a certain kind of awareness and discussion. I can't assure that the change will happen. It's not like after Pink, the molestation or rapes mm -hmm. stopped. It's not like after Thapar, the domestic violence stopped. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I can I can assure that, okay, this is going to stop. But it mm -hmm. at least started having, the conversation started. Yeah. The topic became a more mainstream, more uh, dining table conversation than just keeping it under wraps. So at least with this, I can bring the conversation yeah. Uh, to happen to the forefront that discussions will start happening people will actually start thinking about the logical and scientific relevance 
of this. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that conversation starts. Yeah. Now there are some, of course, very difficult scenes um, that you've done, uh, you know, in, in this in this uh, film, and you know, some some of them, of course, we've also seen in the trailer. More we'll see once people watch mm -hmm. the film. Uh, you know, for you as an actor, Tapsi, when you're emoting a difficult scene, you know, like the one we see where she's been asked to, you know, take all her clothes off and she's shocked that this kind of test is even happening. Um, you know, mm -hmm. after these tough scenes for you, emotionally draining, um, how do you bounce back, you know, post shoot, post pack up? Um, I've been living with this uh, script through the lockdown, you can say. Actually, it's been in my head since the time I heard it in 2018. Uh, so it's been there in my head since then because it has just, as I told you, I was just so shocked to hear it, that this happens. Uh, when the script came in hand, because uh, when the script was ready, the screenplay was ready, uh, we were in early 2020. Yeah. And that is when uh, I, I've been, since then I've been living with it uh, at the back of my head. And so I was already mentally prepared to dive into it. Uh, now how to get out of it was like, as an actor, you know, I feel a sense of uh, accomplishment if it affects me mm -hmm. in real. If it actually like makes me pause and take a little while to get back to reality. That means I have done a decent job at yeah. doing it. So uh, that happiness of, you know, doing that job that if I have felt it from inside, that means it would have, cap it have uh, the camera would have captured it. Yeah. So that sense of happiness helps me get out of it because then I feel okay you know I did my job I did what was there in my hand yeah. to you know push this uh, topic out now you know let's let, let's be ready to receive or let, let's be ready to see what audience does so that happiness helps me get out of that uh, zone okay um, and you know and, and just talking about uh, the impact of this as well Tapsi you know we, we saw it of course with Duti Chand as well in India as you're saying it just happened recently uh, in the Tokyo Olympics, and and obviously this is this is leaving an impact, another hurdle for women in sport, which is anyways uh, there are so many hurdles and roadblocks in India, particularly if we talk about you know it's not easy being a sports person in India, but still they're making us so proud. We saw in the recent Olympics as well, uh, you know a lot of women made us proud. Uh, so do you believe that we need to uh, you know end these roadblocks? We need to clear these obstacles rather than you know have them there for women in sport or generally individuals in sport in our country? See, it has not just happened with one, but many Indian mm -hmm. athletes. It's just that one probably had the courage to uh, face it and call it out. Yeah. There were lots who just went away in oblivion, did not want to face it or question it or put it back. And internationally also, so many athletes just yeah. couldn't take it. Um, and it, it, because it's probably you and I can easily sit and talk, but for someone who's gone through it, for that person to come out and say, no, I'm a woman, like how to prove that? Yeah. So it's not the most easiest of things to do. So there, there are a lot of them who have fought this and who are still fighting, who probably will keep fighting in the future if this is not reviewed or stopped. So yes, uh, athletes ka struggle we've been seeing in a lot of films yeah. and we know about it because most of them end up coming from the smaller towns, smaller cities, right? So we have seen the kind of hurdles they face. Yeah. Uh, but this is not about that. It's about a female, female, female athletes in particular, in addition to the regular struggles. Like in the film, you'll not see that uh, she's gone through the struggle of not having enough resources or, you know, that which is usually yeah. the struggle that we show of an athlete because... It's time we move beyond that. Yeah. We've seen that it is very much there, but this film is not dealing about that. So she is very much privileged when it comes to resources, when it comes to support from the family. That and all is something that is not a yeah. problem for her. It's more of a society yeah. and the system around her mm -hmm. that she is uh, going to fight, which probably is not shown uh, in other films, especially with female athletes. It's an additional problem yeah. that comes with them. Cool. Uh, the fact that, you know, there is a certain taboo. I was the other day I was talking to Hima and she was telling me about how uh, every year that this one girl playing with so many boys in a football uh, field. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, so the, so the fact that because she's a woman, she's, she's supposed to not be so uh, out, such an outdoor person. So that itself starts pushing them towards a direction that they don't really feel like going in but they have to because they are supposed to be they're supposed to prove it to the world that they are women 
and they are a female so they so hence they have to do this True. and then it goes to the next level where there is a thing that okay you have to look like this yeah. if you're not feminine looking enough how will you get a boy how will you get a man to marry mm. and if, if you are ma- you looking like a man how will you get a man yeah. so uh, so you know that whole tab of not being feminine yeah. enough yeah. who decides what is a feminine body yeah. i mean who set this goal that if if you're muscular you're not a female yeah. only a man is allowed to have muscles so mm. you know, kind of taboo that a woman yeah. needs to fight and then you go to a on field yeah. and this kind of testing happens which only happens for females yeah. doesn't happen for men we have to prove that they are man enough or no yeah. so it only happens for females yeah. so uh, this then an elderly thing you end up facing and then you have uh, if you have seen the film there is a third act in the film which you know we we probably will not talk about right now yeah. i would want the audience to see which also becomes a roadblock yeah we have seen in so many cases and the brands and all who are against yeah. this so uh, you know they they've been uh, constantly these kind of hurdles which are for this specific gender so uh, so this is this film will be highlighting athlete. those rather than the usual of struggles of an athlete yeah. yeah and that's why it's so specific and so path breaking as you said and hasn't been seen before yeah. the obstacles and the other parts we've seen before no but what you've yeah. said of course tapsi is 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 fantastic because that just shows that of course it is an athlete story it is this athlete story that you're portraying but it's also very synonymous to the barriers and generally you know these misconceptions that are there for women in our country unfortunately about mm-hmm. feminine Uh, femininity mm-hmm. and you know uh, about all of that but uh, just a couple of last questions now before we end uh, one of course on your own connection with sport as you were telling us you know you you always loved sports since since you were a kid when did this this uh, you know love story for sports develop do you remember what age you were when you started playing your first sport and what was your favorite sport when you were younger i was running uh, when i was a uh, Six years old, okay. I started running. Uh, I used to, you know, those small races that used to happen on sports mm-hmm. day. I started with those when I was in first standard, yeah. and I used to run for like I ended up being the one who used to win the maximum number of uh, medals okay. in sports for m- most of the race uh, styles: hundred yeah. meters, two hundred, four hundred relay, long long jump. All these I used to uh, play. I was not that good in long jump and all, but yeah, I used to. Uh, be- be pretty uh, good in these 100 200 400 and relays so that is what i started off with and then of course then i tried my hand at all other kinds of sports like volleyball basketball yeah. badminton i tried all of that now i play squash so basically i've been a jack of all trades master of none <laughs> I, i just love the energy that sports yeah. brings with it you know the, it not only physically mentally it uh, helps you uh, stay healthy mentally healthy yeah. i love sports yeah no doubt and and of course hopefully uh, many people will be encouraged to get into sports you know once things like gender testing and all of course end in our country mm-hmm. and let's hope that this uh, film uh, does uh, initiate a conversation around ending this discriminatory mm-hmm. practice thank you so much tapsi pannu for joining us thank you thank you so today. much for that And our next guests for the day are co-ideators of Food Bus of India, Arushi Singh and Tejas Singh. In a first of its kind in India, they have started a double-decker food bus in Delhi with a multi-cuisine menu. They serve food from all over the world. Listen in. Restorators with an eye-popping new eatery. We are providing you um, the best experience. A novel experience of dining within a double decker. They're running a double decker food bus in Delhi. That was just in the ideation. Then, when the whole process started, then then the nightmare started, and it took us almost about almost a year to get the get the basic structure going. Music India A list proudly recognizes Arushi Singh and Tejas Singh for excellence in F and B entrepreneurship. Welcome. You're watching News X India A List. My name is Gauri Kundalia. Joining us now, two very special guests we have with us: Tejas Singh and Arushi Singh. They are the co-founders of Food Bus of India, uh, and they will be talking about their very special venture. Uh, Arushi, let me begin with you for, uh, first. Um, tell us a bit about what the Food Bus of India is. Everybody's talking about it. It's all over social media. Tell us exactly what is going on. Thank you for having us. First of all. um so basically food bus of india the name as the name suggests it's a very novel concept that we brought in to delhi india and basically we are providing you um the best experience the novel experience of dining within a double decker 
Okay. So yeah. How does that work? Where do you where where do we find you guys? Where are you based on? Our flagship bus is placed at Rajinder Place, uh, right outside gate number two, metro station gate number two, and um, so you can see it's right. It's big. It's no, it's static. It doesn't move around. It's static, but it gives you the whole experience of being in that London double decker. All right, uh, Tejas, you are yes. one of the co-founders of this project with your sister Arushi. Uh, tell us a bit about how did this strike you? Were you in London one day and you thought that oh, this is something we can do in Delhi? How did this idea come about? Actually, I wasn't in London, but you know, in Delhi, we guys always go out to eat every weekend. We guys go out to eat at a fancy restaurant, and me, being an architect by profession, we always check out the interior, the food, everything, and. try to analyze how much the person how much effort the person put in into setting up his restaurant and then in delhi we saw that most of the restaurants were getting shut or having trouble keeping keeping up because of all the initial investment that they put into the space creating the space paying the rent purchasing the space and everything so the basic model started in our head where we thought thought of a way to try and overcome these hurdles to try and launch something that is not bound by these these things that all the other restaurants are bound by a space or bound by all the work that you get done in the space and then if you if you have to move out then you have to start all over again so that's where the whole concept started that we should create like a temporary structure that we can move around and what better than a bus and then we have a we have a co-founder with us and his son was actually studying in london and then both when both of us got together then he came up with the idea that maybe we can make a double decker bus and it all just fit together in because of the two floors they have the kitchen can be niche and the sitting can be upper so it all worked out very smoothly but that was just till the ideation then when the whole process started then then the nightmare started and it took us almost about almost a year to get the get the basic structure going so speaking of nightmares uh, let's delve into that a little bit because yeah. that means that you guys ideated this uh, in the middle of the pandemic well, that was very brave because uh, we've been profiling so many people from the fmb industry and they've been having a hard time uh, in the last let's say one and a half years uh, what were the challenges like does covid bother you technically we're still in a pandemic so this is that a, a lingering thought what will you do if things go back into let's say a lockdown fingers crossed uh, what were the challenges like See, transportation was a major challenge because we created the bus at an off-site location somewhere close to Delhi, and we had to regularly go there to check the progress. It was a major challenge, and since since most of the labor was also unavailable during those times, so it added a lot to our time frame mm-hmm. and to the whole economic model that we had set up. That was a ma- major challenge that we faced. Yes, even today, even today. with with covid slowly clearing up we can see that the response is getting a little better but people are still a little wary of going into a space but what we are trying to achieve is we are providing them with a safer experience than eating on the street we try to get them into a better cleanly clean environment with a with an air conditioned environment where we can control the parameters so so they don't have to be exposed to the weather and directly exposed to the virus in an out, outdoor situation Hey, Arushi, uh, there's a thread that I'd like to pick on. They just mentioned it. Uh, is actually putting this uh, bus together. How was that experience like? How did you manage to put to put a double decker bus together in Delhi? Because we don't see them very often anymore. Right, right. So, so um, how we began the concept was actually um, it was driven by this fascination to bring something that the people have not seen in Delhi. so um and our plan is to dot the entire city with this bus so that you know uh, you can experience the normal a commoner can experience what he cannot otherwise maybe um have to maybe he cannot you know get that experience otherwise yes. so um i think making of the bus was a great deal because um, nothing like this has been made before in india or in delhi at least that's what i'm aware of so tejas being the architect he has made the bus from scratch so from the basic structure from the it's an actual real bus made from scratch and not something that has been modified for sure above right. so i think that that's an answer he'll be able to give you better because he is the one who did that you know yes tejas uh, do you want to take that yes yeah i'll take that question i actually remember the day when when we sat with our partner and he gave us the idea that we should try and make it like a double decker bus 
and then uh, taking off an image from 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 Google and then taking it onto the software that our architects normally use, trying to get the structure sorted. And then the first day where in the factory where the bus was created, it was just a bunch of metal lying on the floor with some markings done on it. And then slowly, slowly, about it took us about six months where each each metal pipe was bent into shape and each each conduit was placed and then the upper level floor was added. It was quite quite a tedious process because even for the person who made it for us, it was like a first time experience and there were a lot of hurdles in the way. Mm. And they not they didn't only stop there with the structure, but getting the whole restaurant put into it, getting the seats, getting the kitchen operation in such a small tight space. It was it was truly like I said earlier, it was a nightmare. But mm. today today when we look back at it, we feel like it was all worth it, yes. No, it must be worth it because Arushi, you're a lawyer, they just, you're an architect. Arushi, how difficult or easy was it to make this transition? Was this something you always wanted to do? So, uh, by qualification, as I told you, I'm a lawyer and I've done my uh, regular job. The, it's not even a nine to five. Lawyers, by profession, they have all day, all seven days of the week working, right? So um, getting tired of that and always having a dream to do something new, something innovative, to get something of a mix, a mixed concept. So that is what I think drove me to uh, think of such an idea. And uh, of course, with the help of uh, my brother and my family and our uh, very helpful partners who are already established in this industry, we've uh, got it on the road and we hope from this stage onwards, it's only onwards and upwards. I hope so too. And wishing you all the best. Tejas, was it easy uh, for you to make this transition? Was this something you always wanted to do? It was something that I always wanted to do. Uh, being an architect, I was working for Delhi Development Authority. And during my tenure there, we started this project. And I was I was trying to spread my feet into both, both the boards, trying to get both the things sorted. But then there came a day when I just felt like I needed to go full full into it. And then I had to quit my job. It was it was a tough decision. But at that time, it, it did seem like the logical thing to do. Because the bus was starting to get ready. And there was, there was a requirement for a person to be there the whole time and sort things out on a daily basis, yes. Right. So for me, it was logical to to quit my job and to start doing this. To make that transition. Okay. Arushi, so what next for the Food Bus of India? What are your plans now? Are you planning uh, a couple of more buses uh, which will be showing up in Delhi? What's the plan now? What are, what are how, how do you look at scaling this up now? Right. So uh, we have huge plans. And um, in the next two months, we're coming up with the next two buses. They will be placed at Kamla Nagar and Lajpat Nagar. So we will be covering majorly Central Delhi, North Delhi and South Delhi. And probably by the uh, mid of next year, we will come up with a number of more buses. So we will actually, that's the, as I said, that's our plan to dot the entire city with this red fancy double decker so that everybody can have the experience and cherish and just not have a dining experience, but cherish that memory for the next few months till they visit again. Right. Uh, Pages, uh, do you want to add to that? Any special plans that you have that your contribution is going to be to Food Bus of India? Mm, I wouldn't call it a plan. It's more of a dream where, where people uh, symbolize the bus as a, as a place where they can get a unique dining experience and a comfortable space right at the street where they don't have to worry about other things and the weather in Delhi and the hygiene cleanliness. So we want the bus to become a symbol where anybody spots the bus so they know that yes, they can go in and sit and have a good meal and not worry about other things. Right. That's the major dream, yes. Okay. Last question and uh, either of you can take it. Uh, there are lots of people, lots of young entrepreneurs or lots of professionals who have dreams like yours. But your advice to them, how did you take the leap of faith and what would you like to tell them? I think um, I'd answer half of that question by saying that get a plan in your head, work on it, don't quit your job just as soon as uh, you know, you've got that idea, work on it, think about it, uh, plan it, uh, and once you are almost nearing a proper concept, you need to take that leap of faith. It's whether you do it or you don't do it, it's, it's all on, on, on you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd also like to add that if you're passionate enough about it, then the moment will present itself to you where you'll actually feel like, yes, my time is better spent if I if I do something for my own good and and quit my day job and do something like that. I believe the opportunity presents itself mm-hmm. and when you're ready, then you know it. All right. Thank you so much, Arushi. Thank you so much, Tejas, for joining us today and Thanks having again. a conversation with us. Uh, our audience, you can find uh, the Food Bus of India in Delhi. Right now, they're only at Rajinder Place, but they're also coming up with buses in Kamla uh, Nagar and also in Lashpat Nagar mm-hmm. very, very soon. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. And our final guest for the day is actor Sundarya Sharma. Her recent music video, Mast Barsat, composed and sung by Sajid Vajid, is out now. The song is a true dedication to the late Vajid. Listen in. Best known for her Bollywood acting performances. It's a very organically made and done song. So that's why even it's more rooted and organic and feeling. So that's one thing about it. She starred in a recent music video. We connected uh, with the feelings of the song and uh, Talim uh, Studios, you know, when I went there, they, they shortlisted me. I was really, really, you know, amazed and thankful. Yeah. Music's India A-list proudly recognizes Sandhya Sharma for excellence in acting. Hello and welcome to NewsX India A-List. I am Priyanka Sharma and today I am joined with Sondarya Sharma. Sondarya, welcome to the show and congratulations on the release of your music video, Mast Parsat. Thank you so much, Priyanka. I hope you are loving the song. I am. What is your response to the love that the music video is receiving? And not just the fans, but the music video has also received a thumbs up and a shout out from Salman Khan. Totally. It's been overwhelming and uh, it's it's amazing to start my music video, which is my debut mo- uh, music video with Sajid Ji. And, you know, it's, it, this is a tribute and dedication to Wajid Sir. And what a way to start Salman Sir tweeted and, you know, he supported that song and he totally loved it. And apart from that, everyone is loving it. And they, they, they've told us that it's been growing on them, the feelings, the, the music. And, you know, I want to t- tell you one thing that the song, there is in the song, particularly there's only harmonium is being used, no electronic, uh, you know, uh, pro- progressing or anything has been done to it. It's a very organically made and done song. So that's why I feel even it's more rooted and organic and feeling. So that's one thing about it. Right. So what was the response has been amazing. Right. Absolutely. And what was it that made you choose this music video specifically as your debut music video? Uh, Honestly speaking, I didn't choose it to be my song. The song chose me and um, I auditioned for it and I met Sanjay Ji and, you know, there were everybody and, you know, everybody auditioned for it. Who's who? And he was looking for someone who really can enact his only words were that, you know, uh, the song is really close to my heart and our heart. And I would want somebody to portray the emotions exactly th- with the same way we have made it, with the same love. Okay. And when he called me, I was like super thrilled and excited. I was like, you're doing the song. And he saw the audition and he really saw, you know, everything. He asked about my profile that, oh, you've learned acting from New York from Academy. So and so. So, yeah, I mean, it worked for me. Ultimately, it should work for us. Right. And we connected uh, with the feelings of the song and uh, Talim uh, Studios, you know, when I went there, they, they shortlisted me. I was really, really, you know, amazed and thankful. Yeah. So in the music video, you are sharing the sc- screen space with uh, Salman Yusuf Khan. Salman, yes, yeah. Salman Yusuf Khan. So how was the overall experience Jee. of working with him? Very nice, very nice. I think he's very professional and he's really a nice guy. He really comforted me. Uh, he himself is a dancer, performer. So uh, it made really easy for me to work because we were just meeting and uh, we, we decided to shoot in a very short span. We shot for more than 23 hours in a row. So for that, you really need one your actor or your performer, co-performer to be really gelling with you. We didn't have time to chill or discuss things, but we were just working and working and it was really nice working with him. Hmm. So how was the experience of shooting in a new normal now that things are finally opening up? what uh-huh. was, was it any th- different? 
of course it is different the new normal apparently is actually not that normal because it was very, it was scorching you know uh, day time we shot it was very uh, hot and everybody was wearing masks and everything but then we were so much energized and pepped up by the song that none of us uh, even for once felt that oh we are exhausted we are tired it's too hot and this and that we were so moved by the entire feeling and the enthusiasm to work towards it uh, i think kuch cheeze bani hui hoti hain aur ye ek bana hua moment tha hum sab ke liye right so now sondarya uh, as far as uh, we right. have made your debut in 2017 and now you've taken up an acting course yes. in new york so what was it that prompted you to take up the course in new york and how was your overall experience like oh uh, i took up the acting course in los angeles okay with new york film academy and mm. lee strasberg theater and film institute which was again in los angeles so i was there for one and a half okay. year and then later on i was stuck in pandemic in uh, the states mm. so uh, but then you know you end up becoming a better human being you learn so many things pandemic has taught us so many things in life mm. i would just say so it's been really really like i I've, i've seen the world and i thought that i don't know what's next my parents didn't know like i'm i'm stuck there and whether i would be able to finish my course and now what's next I, forget about work it was a challenge to be on your own and living in a new country right uh, but then i think god is kind everything um, ended well and i'm here I, i i got work i met amazing people over there so yeah i've and overall above all i've really uh, learned a lot from that because you need to sometimes unlearn to learn hmm. a few things so i wanted to work on my craft because also i feel that nobody can make you an actor no acting course can make you an actor either you're an actor or not you're not an actor you can just polish your skills i just felt the need to go and explore the world and see what's happening on the other side of the world hmm. and like how far we can go what all i can do so i was trying things even in hollywood i had gone there for auditions and things started to fall in place which i would discuss if things happen smoothly in your future for that we'll have to do another interview right now we'll talk about my mm-hmm. stuff <laughs> <laughs> so as you mentioned that you know 2020 was rough for a lot of people the pandemic hit right. and there were multiple uh, lessons that you learned during this phase so what were your key learnings during this phase oh uh, i think this pandemic has made us very considerate and very uh, better human beings i would say because we were not very compassionate as human beings it has given us value for our time on living being because um, i realized that life is what is life life is so mm-hmm. short when you start to live on your own and a situation which we had never ever imagined a pandemic situation so it was a reality check for all of us that how fast we are moving in this world and leaving behind what so i definitely believe we all are better human beings today and it has made us more compassionate more considerate and uh, yeah to take life more positively and live happily every ounce of it every bit of it absolutely and last but not the least tell us about your upcoming projects after mast barsat what can the audience say from you after mast barsat again after mast barsat they'll have to hear mast barsat for uh, <laughs> enjoy it for a couple of more months okay. and then i have uh, a lineup of four web series and two okay. movies coming up for which i will discuss again otherwise ab mera dobara interview nahi lo if i disclose everything here yeah. <laughs> but yeah hopefully uh, yeah. i will announce things really soon looking forward to those announcements and that's a wrap thank from you. our end. thank you so much for joining us on the show thank you and i would just request all the viewers and subscribers to go on taleem music subscribe like and please give shout shout all your love give your blessings to us and listen to our song mast barsat i hope you all enjoy it right listen to mast barsat and that's a wrap from our end thank you so much for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon